In this video, I will explain you Kubernetes architecture in simplest manner possible. We go deep down in the Kubernetes cluster, understanding different components and how they actually work. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's start. So we start with creating a cluster. You can create a Kubernetes cluster locally, either using tools like Minikube or KubeADM. Optionally, you can also use public cloud provider services like EKS in AWS, AKS in Azure, GK in Google Cloud to create Kubernetes clusters. Inside this Kubernetes cluster, we have two different types of machines or as we call them nodes. So we have a master node, which is responsible to handle everything inside the cluster. Along with master node, we also have another kind of node known as worker node. This worker node is actually responsible to run your application containers inside Kubernetes cluster. So you have master node that is going to handle everything inside the cluster. And you have worker nodes, which are responsible to run your application containers inside the Kubernetes cluster. Let's start with worker nodes and look at different components inside it. As we all know, worker nodes are responsible to run application containers and they run this application containers inside something known as pods. Pods are smallest deployable units in the Kubernetes cluster and the pod can hold one or more containers. A single worker node can have more than one pods or it can have a single pod as well. So these containers are actually running inside a object, Kubernetes object known as pods. To deploy and manage pods inside this worker node, we have an agent named as kubelet. This kubelet agent is running on all worker nodes and it gets information from the master node to decide where should be the pod running and how to manage it. Along with this, for a worker machine to create and manage containers, we need to have a container runtime interface or a software like Docker. So a worker machine will also contain CRI or container runtime interface such as Docker here. Other options are container D, Rocket, etc which is supported by Kubernetes as well. Also, to enable communication between these two pods or to make these pods or application accessible to the end users, we have another networking component in the worker node, which is known as Kube Proxy. Kube Proxy is used for pod to pod communication, also for load balancing service proxy and to make your application accessible to the end users. So these are different components inside the worker nodes. You have Kube Proxy for pod to pod communication and to expose your application. You have container runtime interface to create and delete containers. You have Kubelet, an agent that is running on every worker node, which get information from the master node and handle the workloads inside the worker nodes. Along with this, you can have more add-ons or plugins that you install on your worker nodes, but, but these are all the important components inside your worker nodes. Now that we have understood the different components inside worker nodes and how they actually work, let's look at the different components inside master node. So master node or control plane has four very important components that are responsible to manage everything inside the cluster. The first component is the Kube API server. This Kube API server is like an entry point for everything you do inside the cluster. So let's say you are a DevOps engineer and you want to create a new pod or maybe delete a pod or just get the status. If you want to do anything inside the cluster, you will have to talk to the Kube API server. So you can talk to Kube API server either by running commands using Kube CTL command line tool, either using Kube uh, Kubernetes dashboard or maybe using SDKs or anything. So you will talk to the Kube API server. Kube API server will validate if the request is okay, if the user is authenticated or not. And if it works, then it will get the information from the other components and provide it to the end user or to the DevOps engineer here. So API server is like an entry point which validates the request and also authenticates the user. Next master node component is the scheduler. Scheduler is used to assign pods to the worker nodes. Let's say you made a request to the API server to create a new pod. Scheduler is going to check which nodes have enough capacity to launch this new pod. Once the nodes on which the pods are going to be run is decided by the scheduler, scheduler provides this information to the Kube API server. Kube API server gives this information to the kubelet running on that particular node and thus it creates the new pod on the worker node. So scheduler is used to assign pods on the nodes based on resource capacity or all the manifest files that you have defined for your cluster. Now what if there's an issue inside the cluster or one of these pods shows an error or gets deleted? That's when the next Kubernetes master node components comes into play. So next Kubernetes component is the controller manager. Controller manager is used to monitor the entire cluster and it makes sure that everything is as you have defined inside your manifest files. So let's say you've said you want to have four pods running. It will make sure that the four pods are running all the times 
If that's not the case, we'll tell API server, which will recreate the pod. Following the same procedure where the scheduler first decides what nodes to create the pods on, then gives the information to API server, and then Kubelet creates it. So controller manager is used to monitor and make sure everything is working as you have defined. And it does that by comparing the desired state with the actual state of the cluster. But where is this cluster information or cluster data stored? It is stored inside the new, it is stored inside the next master node component, which is HCD. HCD is a key value store that stores all the information about the cluster, what application is running, what pods are running on which nodes and everything else. One thing to note is HCD can only talk to the Cube API server. So if you want to get any information from the HCD, it has to be through the Cube API server. So you can see Cube API server is like a center of communication for every component inside the master node, as well as to the Kubelet, which is running on the worker node. So this is the Kubernetes architecture. We have master node and the worker node. Master node is responsible for handling workloads inside the cluster. Worker nodes are actually running the application workloads here. Inside worker node, we have the pods, which is the smallest unit responsible to run the application container. We have Kubelet, an agent, which is going to run on all the worker nodes and also responsible to create pods. Next, we have container runtime interface and we also have Kube proxy for networking and for exposing our application. Inside master node, we have Kube API server, which is the entry point and the authentication system for every request that you make. It also exposes the Kubernetes API for the end user to start using it. Next component is the scheduler, which is used to assign pods to the nodes. Then we have controller manager that makes sure everything is working as you want or as you have desired. And all the cluster information is stored inside HCD. So, so this is a simplified explanation on Kubernetes architecture. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. And for more information, I would recommend checking out my another video, which explains what is Kubernetes and how it actually works. Do check it out. Thank you and have a good day.